Now, let me tell you the use of local anesthetic drug in the intravenous regional block, right? So, this local anesthetic drugs can be used in intravenous regional block. The intravenous regional block, remember, this is also called Byers block. Right? Remember, this is also called Byers block. Now, where is this particular intravenous regional block indicated? Remember, intravenous regional anesthesia is indicated for any procedures on the arm below the elbow or on the leg below the knee. Right? So, it is indicated in the procedures on the arm below the elbow on the leg below the knee okay next now what we do is so for the procedures whichever are taking nearly around 40 to 60 minutes right for the procedures whichever are taking 40 to 60 minutes on the arm below the elbow and as well as on the leg below the knee we can use this particular intravenous regional block or the Byers block. Now, what we do here is, in case of the intravenous regional block, an IV cannula is inserted. Right? An IV cannula, it is inserted over a distal vein. Right? An IV cannula is inserted over the distal vein. So, it is inserted into the distal vein in the limb which is scheduled for the surgery. Now, after this like what we do is, we apply the tourniquet. Right, we apply the tourniquet over the knee or elbow wherever the surgery is planned. Right, so after the applying the tourniquet, remember the pressure in the tourniquet, how much you should apply is, the pressure in the tourniquet should be maintained at least, right, should be maintained at least 50 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure, right, the pressure in the tourniquet, it should be applied 50 millimeters of mercury above the patient's systolic blood pressure. Now, now, after the inserting the cannula into the distal vein, now this particular anesthetic drug should be injected. So, this anesthetic drug should be injected. So, once the anesthetic drug is injected, remember this analgesia will occur. This analgesia, it will occur within 3 to 4 minutes, right, within 3 to 4 minutes immediately the analgesia will occur and the surgery can be commenced all right now what the important multiple choice question i'll tell you here remember in the intravenous regional block the drug of choice is prilocaine this will be the multiple choice question right so in intravenous regional anesthesia the drug of choice is the prilocaine Okay, so the prilocaine is a drug of choice in case of the intravenous regional block. Now, why this particular prilocaine is considered as the drug of choice? Because this is the least toxic local anesthetic drug, right? Because this is the least toxic local anesthetic drug. That is one point. And another important point is this is having largest therapeutic index okay so this particular prilocaine remember this is least toxic and as well as this is having largest therapeutic index so that is the reason why the prilocaine is considered as the drug of choice for the intravenous regional block now if prilocaine is not available, lignocaine is an acceptable alternative. Okay, so alternative to the prilocaine will be the lignocaine. 
right alternative to the prilocaine the lignocaine will be the alternative now remember that whenever you are giving either prilocaine or lignocaine for the intravenous regional block adrenaline should not be added to the solution this is a very important point for surface anesthesia in order to increase the duration of action of the drug or in order to reduce the systemic side effects for surface anesthesia we are combining lignocaine with adrenaline but when you are giving the local anesthetic drug for the intravenous regional block remember don't add adrenaline to either your prilocaine or the lignocaine all right next now we have one more drug which is called bupivacaine remember bupivacaine should never be employed for intravenous regional block right this is an important point this bupivacaine this is never employed for the intravenous regional block why because this particular bupivacaine is too toxic right it is too toxic particularly this is too toxic to the myocardium right particularly to the myocardium all right so this is about your buyer's block or the intravenous regional block remember what is this buyer's block is this is indicated in the procedures wherever the procedure is required over the arm below the elbow or the procedure over the leg below the knee and this is given when the duration of surgery is around 40 to 60 minutes what we do here is we insert an iv cannula over the distal vein of the leg or the arm wherever the surgery is required and tourniquet is applied over the knee joint or over the elbow right and now the pressure in the tourniquet has to be increased more than right more than 50 millimeters of mercury above the systolic blood pressure of the individual and now this anesthetic drug is injected into the cannula an analgesic effect will occur within three to four minutes all right now the drug of choice for the buyer's block is prilocaine because it is least toxic and it is having largest therapeutic index all right and alternative to the prilocaine what we have is the lignocaine okay now remember bupivacaine should never be used for the buyer's block because it is too toxic very particularly to the myocardium now this particular local anesthetic drugs are even useful in spinal anesthesia all right these are also useful even in spinal anesthesia now here what we do is like we inject the local anesthetic drug in the subarachnoid space right the local anesthetic drug is injected into the subarachnoid space right and what is this particular subarachnoid space this subarachnoid space is the space between the pia mater and as well as the arachnoid mater and this subarachnoid space this is also called as the intrathecal space right this is also called as the intrathecal space okay so this local anesthetic drug is injected into the subarachnoid space in the lumbar spinal cord right in the lumbar spinal cord now if you take this particular spinal cord remember this spinal cord will end or it will terminate at the lower border of the l3 vertebra right at the lower border of l3 vertebra in case of children whereas you take in case of adults this spinal cord it will terminate at the lower border of l1 vertebra right it will terminate at the lower border of the l1 vertebra in adults right in adults all right now now in order to induce the spinal anesthesia this spinal anesthetic drug it has to be inserted into this particular lumbar spinal cord right so spinal anesthesia can be performed safely in l2 and l3 intervertebral space in adults why because the spinal cord is terminating at l1 
lower border of the L1 vertebra. So what you do is you inject this particular local anesthetic drug in L2 and L3 intervertebral space in case of adults. Whereas you take in case of children, in children this has to be injected into L4 and L5 space. Right, it is injected into the L4, L5 space. Now, this particular spinal anesthesia, remember, it will cause or it will create what is called as zone of differential block. Right, it will create zone of differential block. Now, what do you mean by the zone of differential block? Now, whenever you are giving this spinal anesthesia, the autonomic fibers will be blocked the sensory fibers will be blocked and motor fibers will be blocked but whenever you give this spinal anesthesia all the fibers will not be blocked at the same level of the spinal cord for example now whenever you are injecting the uh, local anesthetic drug you take at the level of L3 vertebra there is a sensory blockade right at the level of L3 vertebra there is sensory blockage. We will consider that. For example, okay. Now, you take the autonomic block. The autonomic fibers, they are blocked two segments higher. Right? The autonomic fibers, they are blocked two segments higher. Whereas, you take the motor fibers. Motor fibers, they are blocked at two levels lower right motor fibers two segments lower okay so what do you mean by the differential block whenever you give this final anesthesia it will cause zone of differential block in which the autonomic fibers they are blocked at two segments higher and motor fibers they are blocked two levels lower than the sensory block. This is what is called as differential block. That means the autonomic fibers, motor fibers, sensory fibers, they are all of them they are not blocked at the same level. Right? The autonomic fibers they are blocked two levels higher, the motor fibers they are blocked two levels lower than the sensory block. Okay. Now why is this happening? Like, why do you have this particular differential block? Right? Why do you have this differential block? Because it is due to different sensitivity of various types of nerve fibers. Because of different sensitivity of various types of nerve fibers, you have what is called as differential block. Next. Now, whenever you are giving this particular spinal anesthesia, what are all the various structures which are encountered during the lumbar puncture? Right? Structures... encountered during the lumbar block okay structures encountered during the lumbar block or the lumbar puncture now whenever you are inserting the needle remember first and foremost the skin will be punctured right so, after the skin, the just beneath the skin, the subcutaneous tissue will be punctured in the lumbar puncture. And following the subcutaneous tissue, the next structure which will be punctured is the supraspinous ligament. And just underneath that, you have the interspinous ligament which will be punctured. And following the interspinous ligament, we have ligamentum flavum which will be punctured. And following this, the dura matter will be punctured and following that arachnoid matter will be punctured. So this will be the sequence of structures which you come across whenever you are doing the lumbar puncture. So once you puncture the arachnoid matter then you have reached the subarachnoid space. There you have to inject the local anesthetic drug and that will cause spinal anesthesia. Alright, next. Now, let me discuss what are the drugs which are used in case of spinal anesthesia. The drugs which are used in spinal anesthesia is, one, we have lignocaine. 
okay and what percentage of the lignocaine remember 5% lignocaine is used for the spinal anesthesia and you have one more drug which is called bupivacaine right one more drug which is called bupivacaine so what percentage of bupivacaine remember it is 0.5% bupivacaine right it is 0.5% bupivacaine which is injected for the spinal anesthesia